tonight and the pairing and everything. Can we get some first impressions of just the cigar? Mm. What what are you picking up on this thing, Paul? Oh, some nice cocoa notes, mm-hmm. uh, nice earth, nice black pepper too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a lot of black pepper initially. Right pepper. Up, right, peppered. Peppered. Is that what you said, Dave? Peppered. Pepper. <laughs> Pepper. Uh, so dark cocoa, earth, pepper, uh, nice rich spice on the retrohale, creamy smooth too. Um, just just a great combination of different flavors here. Um, it is a five country blend, by the way, so we should yeah. be picking up some some different flavors out of this <laughs> wonderful cigar. <laughs> yes, it's multi multicultural. Mm. It's <laughs> multicultural experience. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dave, what about you? What do you think of the cigar here? Mm-hmm. Smooth cocoa. Um, a little pepper. Yep, and it's got this subtle sweetness that rules through it. Yeah, that's the true. Retro hail is creamy and intoxicating. I love it. The retro hail is creamy. Mm. With a little that, spice. Oh, it's, spicy! It's like it's spicy. Spicy, spicy, man. Spicy. There's some spicy. spicy. I don't get cream in the I retro get, hail. Well, it's, there is a creamy finish to it, though. Yeah. Okay. Creamy finish, spicy retro hail. Okay. You do know the difference between your your nose and your tongue, right? Well, no. To me, it's, no. I'm getting. You don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> but to me, the the retro hail is. He's easily kind of, confused. It's creamy and it's got some spice to it. I think it's both. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. You, that's that. My it, nose isn't your nose, and no, that's okay. it is not. And that is very okay. Thank you. Talia, yes. what do you what do you think of the cigar here? Hey, it's sweet and spicy. What's not to like? No, yeah. I, absolutely. Exactly. And Amen. You have brought mm. Jameson Black Barrel mm-hmm. to oh. pair with our tobaccos mm. tonight. Mm-hmm. You want to tell over. us a little bit about the uh, that bottle over the little tokens in the can? Oh yeah, is it in there yet? Yeah, yeah. to the right. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Black Barrel and how it's different from the uh, average Jameson? Yeah. Um, so Jameson traditionally is a blend. So it's a blend between column stills and pot stills. So a column still grain whiskey and a pot still whiskey from barley, malted okay. and unmalted. So we kind of talked about that before. Right. Um, where the unmalted gets it like really spicy. Spicy. So what they'll do is they'll age it in bourbon barrels and sherry casks, mm. Spanish sherry. So you're, the original Jameson, spicy, kind of fruity, fairly smooth. Mm-hmm. Well, with the Black Barrel, what they're doing is they're taking that column still grain whiskey and they're aging it separately in double charred bourbon barrels. Now, what does double charred mean? They so burn the barrel twice? twice? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, that's yeah. exactly what it means. So they it's burn like the barrel twice. It. Yes. Let's um, burn it again. So what the, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, really. The Coopers call it bringing the barrel back to life. Okay. So by burning it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So the Coopers are, you know, the builders of the casks and the barrels that whiskey's aged in. And if you see the inside of a charred bourbon barrel, it's got that what they call like the alligator skin. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of like cracks and grooves and all these things for the whiskey to get closer to the wood. Now is that put into the barrel like on the wood or do they burn that? alligator stuff yeah they they create a fire inside of the barrel how do which they is do that creating, without blowing it up um skill <laughs> skill, <laughs> skill skill so they actually build a fire within the barrel so that they're at, they're charring the, the inside thing. so mm-hmm. that's caramelizing the wood even more mm-hmm. having those crevices where the whiskey can access the wood more so the more liquid is touching wood the right. better aging the faster aging all that stuff mm-hmm. and then the caramelization is getting those butterscotch kind mm-hmm. of vanilla the sweeter tones yeah. so it's um it's not that like kind of fruity sweetness that the base jameson has as much mm. it's more of the like creamy butterscotch vanilla sweetness of a bourbon so it's what i call the irish drinkers bourbon so it's a very okay. good transition for people who Maybe they're only bourbon drinkers and they want to try Irish whiskey or, you know, they only drink Irish and they want to transition to a bourbon. It's kind of that middle piece. Yeah, I get you. Whenever I whenever you hear about a process like this, the first thing I typically think of is who was the person who thought, 
I wonder what this would taste like if I put it into a burned barrel. <laughs> My guess I bet is you it that was would, probably by I, mistake. I, get you, I bet you that would be good. <laughs> yep. You know, like, where did that idea come from? It's just, it's it's bizarre, but the processes, mm -hmm. it really does um, make an impact on the Oh, yeah. I mean, the differences whiskey. between the Black Barrel and Jameson Original are oh, pretty vast. They're vast. I mean, even the coloring mm -hmm. is so much darker and, like, more amber Mm -hmm. than that like and yellowy murder. orange of a of a base jameson mm -hmm. so let me ask you something how in your experience with different spirits how much how many times would they char a barrel before they'd say okay this has had enough let's get a new one is it like three four or is it just you, two or? you mean like how many so you said it's, it's double charred. Yeah, they, so, so they char it twice. Right. So is there is there a third time they would char it? Is there a fourth time? Not necessarily I, with this one, but it's just saying. Not that I've seen. In spirits in general. Right. Not that I've seen, because I mean, at a certain point, you're gonna burn right through the wood. You know, the yeah. staves. Okay. Aren't so that, they they know they know where thick. when's enough's enough. Because mm -hmm, okay. because the the staves of the barrel aren't terribly thick. Right. Yeah. So like the first char is gonna get just a little bit of crackling. That second char is gonna get the really deep grooves. Okay. So I haven't seen, I mean, maybe there's a whiskey out there that I don't know about that has a third, but mm. I would be surprised. I highly you doubt would, that. You would expect <laughs> it to go right through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, they, do, they, do they, like after they char, do they like clean out some of the ash or they just leave all that in, you know, all the carbon? Actually, that's a really interesting question. I never even thought about that. I really didn't. I assume they just blow out the ash, so you're not yeah. getting ash within. Well, the, I mean, it's just like the it liquid. Would be filtered out too, right? Yeah. But it's not like yes. a water bath or anything like that, because mm -hmm. you still want to get that smokiness right. as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, what do we think of the pairing? Oh, now that we've talked about the cigar and the drink, so it is the the black barrel is making the cigar a little sweeter, mm -hmm. getting a little smoother. bit more earthy. It's definitely smoother. A little sweeter, a little more earth tones. However, it is earth. also smoothing out the black barrel too. The cigar is smoothing out the black barrel. Mm. I think it's it's very similar to what happened last week. Yeah, where the, in, in the pipe tobacco, where it was working both the the, the pipe tobacco was becoming a lot of uh, it was changing in terms of tones, and it was uh, the and the sweetness of the tobacco was being enhanced by the mm. by the uh, Monkey Forty Seven, so it's very similar today too. What do you think, Talia? How is how is the cigar affecting your enjoyment of your black barrel? Yeah, it's actually giving it more of that, um, like oily, buttery finish that we liked mm. from the higher proof bourbons that I had brought in. Mm -hmm. So I find it to be a lot more like it stays on your tongue more. Yeah, but yeah, it mellows out. Longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it mellows. It's mellowing out the pepperiness of the cigar and mm -hmm. also like the smokiness of the black barrel for me dave mm. yeah i concur oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the uh it's definitely bringing out more of the sweetness of the cigar mm -hmm. and likewise the uh it's definitely adding more of that you know buttery oily finish that uh, we got from the um basically what talia just said yeah <laughs> thanks paul <laughs> i figured i'd get it before dan told you <laughs> Well, I can I concur with everybody. <laughs> um, <Incredibly> you know, well. <laughs> dark coffee, cocoa, earth, a gentle black pepper in the finish of the cigar. Pepper. The the um, black barrel is certainly making the cigar a little bit sweeter, which is really nice. Yes. Um, with all that, uh, those dark, rich flavors, that extra sweetness, mm -hmm. I think makes the cigar more enjoyable. And it is making the finish of the drink last longer, yeah. which is really nice, too. Very, very good. Now, this brings up something I wanted to talk about, especially with you, Talia. And that was, you know, here we have a cigar that has nice, dark, rich, earthy, cocoa, chocolate kind of notes. Uh, the pipe tobacco we're going to be doing in the second half of the show also has those, you know, similar p profile. What are the kinds of things if you're if you're smoking something like that? What are the kinds of scotches or bourbons or dri or spirits out there that would go well with that kind of a flavor profile? Well, for bourbons, definitely a more oaky vanilla focused bourbons. So mm. the ones that 
you know, really have uniqueness to them, really focus on barrel aging. So like your Jeffersons and your rabbit holes. Yep, I'm name dropping. Um, <laughs> so that, None of which you represent. Of course not. No. Oh, of course not. <laughs> I'm totally neutral. <laughs> but any sort of like really nice, like oak forward, I think, mm. bourbons. Um, okay. Name dropping some more as far as <laughs> Jameson goes. There's actually two other Jamesons that go really well with chocolatey flavors. So the cold brew and the stout. So mm. any kind of whiskey in general that's experimenting with, you know, coffee notes or the stout cough, like the stout beer, yeah. like barrels and things mm -hmm. like that, because they're having those, you know, coffee, more rich tones to them. Um, also rum. Mm. rum for sure i think a spiced rum would go really well with this yep i agree uh or any kind of like those tropical kind of banana fruity scotches that you have um definitely rum and then even aged tequilas if you're getting like a really high-end really long aged tequila that like has what? those oak like oh let me think um like, like avion 44 maybe <laughs> <laughs> But even like the Don Julio 1942 and mm. uh, there's a, actually, I think um, there's another really high extra Añejo tequila that one of these stars has put out and it, his name escapes me now because there's so many of them. It's mm. like Michael Jordan or somebody. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I tasted that and it was pretty good. And I think so any of those extra aged tequilas, extra aged tequilas. so they're like oaky, vanilla-y, they have those classic bourbon tones to it but mm -hmm. like i wouldn't do a silver tequila with this mm. uh paul do you have anything to add to that you're you're like a bourbon master i, I am a bourbon master but i'm actually going to take myself and us out of our comfort zone right now <gasps> oh you know? but i won't it's not too far out because we've had this before about a year ago and, gin. It, was, and it was gin <laughs> uh. <clears throat> the uh no. it is a rum Mm -hmm. And uh, specifically the Pompero Anniversario mm. that we had with the uh, Padron, because that has a little bit of a chocolate cocoa yeah. flavor, and this cigar also has a nice cocoa flavor too. And I think a uh, that type of rum, which has a cocoa chocolate flavor, uh, which is the only one I've ever had uh, that has that type of flavor, would go well with this too. It would probably enhance some of the earthy cocoa tones. I would agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but normally, would uh, other than that, it would be I'd, I'd say something smooth, like a like a nice smooth scotch. With like I think would go very very well with this, mm -hmm. um, or maybe a, a lower APV bourbon. Nothing too harsh. Not, not not harsh. Nothing too high, like a like a like a barrel proof or anything. I think it, you want to keep something that's going to be able to complement this cigar. So maybe like a um, the old tub would go well with this. Mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Name dropping. I could see that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I Very think those good. But I, th I literally, I literally think the pimp, pimp sorry, the pimp. Pompero and Rosario <laughs> would go very, very well the with the cigar. Pompey, no, Pompero. Pompero. Parquet. Parquet. Mm. Now, uh, for those of you who you know haven't been seeing the latest episodes, you know, seventeen twenty, uh, uh, yeah, seven twenty four is a uh, long time. Uh, brand it's been it was founded in 1874 um, it ended with the Cuban embargo back in, in 1963 Kurt brought it back in 2006 43 years after the factory closed its doors for the last time and this year 2021 is of course the 15th anniversary of Kurt's version of the brand uh, the Factory 57 blend was introduced back in 2014, and the name is an homage to the U.S. government's designation of the original blend's factory tax number, 57, i.e. it was the 57th licensed cigar factory in the United States. That's where the Factory 57 comes from. Um, now, you know, we're right in the middle of summer now, so some summer questions for us to to talk about to make some uh discussion here mm -hmm. first off and uh this the, this was paul's idea which i think is a great question here does summer change what you smoke in other words do you tend to go lighter cigars sh shorter cigars longer cigars 
in the summer does what you smoke in the summer differ from what you smoke in the winter time or in the fall or when it gets cooler do you, do you want mm. me to start yeah you might as well because you know dave's still thinking yes so normally in the summertime i tend to smoke a little bit more mm -hmm. all right um, and I will, because it's going to be, I'm going to be spending a lot more time outside because it's going to be hotter out except for this week. Um, <laughs> but in general, yes, it, it, I'm going to be in the sun. I'm going to be outside a lot more. I'm going to want to maybe just tone down what I normally would smoke. I usually would do maybe more medium full of full body cigars, mm -hmm. uh, in other parts of the year. But if I'm going to be out there smoking a little bit more, I'm going to want to maybe do something maybe medium ish, you know? So I think if I'm going to have a couple of cigars in the during the daytime, I'm going to keep them kind of light, you know, medium. Um, but the length or the or the the size, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm going to yeah, you're the I, same. I, all I, all I, it doesn't matter if it's winter time, springtime, summer, fall. <laughs> I'm going to do a Toro Gordo. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So you're 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 the two two and a half hour smoke, medium to full, all the time. Yes. Maybe in summertime, maybe a little bit less than the medium full. I'll, I'll save that for the nighttime smoke, mm -hmm. but during the day, maybe medium at best. What, what, what would you smoke during the day? Like specifically? Yeah. Like what's medium at best smokes that Paul like, smokes? Like I'd say Chata Oaks. Chata Oak uh, Broadleafs would be one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 724, the Torpedoes, uh, mm -hmm. the original line Torpedoes, or uh, um, Aladinos. Oh, the, the, I Al love the Aladinos. Aladinos. Those are great medium smokes. Yep. Uh, the Maduros, I love the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Maduro Toros. The Elegantes are, are excellent. Elegante. Um, Cigar Privé, if yeah. you get that one. Well, that's all year for you. Well, Cigar yeah. Privé, yeah. all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that should I'm be trying like to a, switch it up, but, should be like a but you, still get, you. you still get pulled back in. <laughs> <laughs> what, about you? what about you, Dave? Um, no, nothing changes. Nothing, nothing changes, changes for you? Yeah. No, nothing changes. I, I just, I enjoy... With tobacco of all kinds all the time yep do you smoke more during the summer or, or it's this doesn't matter it's the same, matter. same. It's, it's, it's still the same no matter what yep it's still the same why do i mean you, why the only exception would be the holidays where like thanksgiving and like christmas i'll probably have something sweeter like an acid or a sweet jane or something like that but that's it to treat yourself smoke your dessert you no know, just yeah like a smoky dessert yeah yeah Okay. No, if I'm treating myself, I'm going to have like a placentia I'm a fuerte generation. Yeah. Generation. 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 Mm -hmm. mm. Talia, yeah. I don't know what, you, what your smoking habits are like. I yeah, know you, so... I know you, you, you do, and, and I know you had cigars at your wedding and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But, uh, you know, what? tell us a little bit about you and what you do when you're not here. Well, so I, of course, smoking. don't smoke as uh <laughs> much as you gents well cigars at least Few and uh do. you know <laughs> <laughs> but i do smoke smoke more in the summer mm. because we have more cookouts my uncles always bring something um but i do like like smaller cigars in the summer because i'm always bouncing around and we mm -hmm. pretty much always smoke outside so weather's nicer smoking outside i'm always kind of like in and out bouncing around in the summertime like mm. it's hard for me to stay stationary yeah yeah yep. um so smaller cigars sweeter cigars but i do smoke more often in the summer now would would you say let you know let's say you know weekend or whatever you know when you're not working mm -hmm. um would you tend to smoke more at night or is any time during the day some sometime when you might have a cigar uh, summertime, probably like later in the day, like dusk, mm -hmm. you know, like out on the deck grilling dinner. Mm. Um, wintertime, I do like larger cigars that last longer because I'd like to smoke outside in like snowy woods walks Ooh. Mm. in the, in the wintertime. So I like them to last for the walk, Right. you know, have a little flask of whiskey, have a nice cigar that's going to last me, you know, for, for the, the walk and back, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so that'll be, that'd be more daytime, but summertime. Yeah. More like evening grilling is the best time. Now, is that you too, Paul? Is, are you more of an evening guy in the summer? Yes. Or oh, yes. Like all day, every day. No, I'm it's upright. I'm having a cigar. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, you know, if you, while you're working, if I, okay. 
that my my normal day would be if I'm getting up in the morning around five thirty or so. <gasps> can take, oh, take, oh, ouch! Oh, take oh, palpitations. Take, <laughs> the only thing I'm looking at at five thirty in the morning is the back of my eyelids. <laughs> get my dog outside. I, I'll go for a little walk with him. I'll grab a cigar and I'll do our morning walk. And that's going to probably end up being something mild or mild to medium. Somewhere and in that four range. and a half hours for that 10-mile walk no, you take the dog No, on. it's probably no more than a mile walk. And then, <laughs> then when he's done, I'll sit in the back, I'll stand on the back porch and just finish it there with a cup of coffee. Mm. Black, of course. Black. <laughs> of course, it has to be black. Black coffee, Dave, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Back and then, but, but But night, but... You know, during the day, if I'm not working, I'll do, you know, obviously my things around the house or whatever, but I'll have a, one or two during the day. And then mm-hmm. at nighttime, you know, when, when Nicole's done with work, sometimes we get on the back porch after dinner and we'll have a cigar and a drink. And that's when I'm going to have my more of my fuller body cigar. Now, is Nicole still working from home? She's always she working from home. She's yeah, always she's always, she's a, she's a remote worker. Yes. Yes. Lucky her. That's awesome. Nothing's changed. Yeah, nothing's changed for us either. Right. Bye, honey. I'll see you in twelve hours. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, now, here's another question: Does the the summer change what you like to pair with your cigar, or what you like to drink with your cigar mm-hmm. in the summertime, or do you drink the same stuff year round? <laughs> Only when I'm on the show. <laughs> Otherwise, it's Sam Summer. No, I'm no. Stockpile no. it all summer no, long got... so I can drink it all winter long. <laughs> you know, damn summer. No, actually, you know, the, 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 the most amount of alcohol in my house right now is bourbon. So there is no beer at all. Uh, the, at the, all. For you to say that, Dave, is just unbelievable. I know, right? And, uh, you, you, okay. Yeah. I can't go down that road again with you because, I mean, when we first did this thing, what, two years ago? <gasps> It was, it was oh my Sam God. summer, oh, Sam summer all year, and now you say you have no beer in the house and no all beer. bourbon. It's all bourbon. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah, that's yep. incredible. Imagine if you if you give yourself a few more chances with the gin. Oh, yeah! Oh, come, come on, man! Come on. It's gonna be come awesome. On. I'll just pour vodka into a sprite <laughs> and I get a gin. There you go. Ew. Uh, <laughs> Rod uh, says I smoke about the same, but a bigger size in the summer. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, too cold for a Toro most winter nights. On weekends in the summer, I might smoke an extra cigar. Well, Rob, when you have 12 feet of snow on either side of you during the winter time, <laughs> yeah. I completely you, see your point yeah, of view. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you can carve That's like your, your drink handles into your. For your... <laughs> and uh, John says, "I smoke the same, just more in the summer, being outdoors." Yes. So the same stuff, but more often in the summer, being out. And there's nothing like smoking outside. Nope. It's great. I love the being best a, place. Uh, mm-hmm. on my three season porch, you know, it's all screened in. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's a great place to have a cigar. Yep. Or a pipe or something. I love that. Love doing it on the walk. Keeps the bugs away. Yeah. Well, even that in the was winter, one of when the... you got that fireplace going, man, that's freaking nice. Well, that you know, that's true. Mm-hmm. That was one of the first dates that the hubby and I had. I was taking Aww. a walk through the snow with a couple of Walking flasks in, of Jameson Black, Black Barrel and some cigars. Nice. Nice. Nothing like that. Is that when you knew? I don't know, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. Or is that, or is that just the first test? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you, you can't do this, you drink whiskey, you're smoke gone. cigars, and walk through the snow? All right. <laughs> we can go forward. <laughs> yes, you can have a second date. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right. Are we ready for a little uh, cigar confessions? Mm, We are ready. Okay. Cigar confessions. All right. Uh, My confession today is, you know, we have a couple of dogs at the house. And um, my, uh, one of my daughters, you know, has, and I've talked about it on the show before, some emotional issues. And she's on the autistic scale. She's got something called POTS. I won't go into what all that means, but she's... A service dog, psychiatric kind of service dog. And um, we've had one who, you know, Echo, who's been with us for several years, great dog, uh, golden retriever. And, um, but much to my chagrin, he's turning out to be very anxious. So 
it's like not only do my kids have emotional problems, so do my dogs. How does that freaking happen? <laughs> this is so wrong. Instead of helping my daughter with the anxiety, the dog gets anxious being around my anxious daughter. So we have another dog that we're training to, to do service work. And this dog looks great, but it looks like it's not going to grow big enough to be, you know, anyway, whatever. But uh, so Urza, this, this little dog was kind of a mix. I don't even remember what the mix is. And that's neither here nor there, I guess. But um, much more than Echo, she's kind of a chewer. And she loves shredding stuff, you know. So Shredder. Paper, paper bags, you know, uh, uh, cardboard, you know, give it to her. And she's like seven months old, so she's teething like you told me earlier, Paul. It's probably true. And um, But the, in the last couple of weeks, I've experienced something I haven't had before. I... I like to lay my stuff out the night before um what i need to bring to work as far as cigars or pipes or things go and then i get it all packed into my bag and and, and go the next morning and one day uh a couple of weeks ago i came home and in my office there's this huge pile of pipe cleaners on the floor the pipe cleaners seem to be just fine they weren't bent they weren't in any you know messed up themselves but the bag that they had been in was completely obliterated it was like a million pieces of little plastic stuff all over the floor I'm like what the heck happened here how did you get and then this morning i went looking for my bag of cigars that i was going to bring with me to to smoke during the day and they weren't there they were gone and I went into the living room uh, where the door to our uh, basement is. I wanted to take a peek into the basement, you know, because it's, you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, it's been raining a lot and I might need to be building an ark. And I wanted to make sure that my basement was still dry. We have a sub pump down there. I wanted to make sure it was working. And on my way to where the door was, there are my cigars. They're all on the floor. Now I look at them and... There's no teeth marks. There's nothing but the bag. I can see the bag. It's in a million pieces all over the rug. And I'm like, what the? That dog got into the study, dragged off my bag of cigars, got rid of the cigars because all she wanted was the plastic bag and left the cigars there. And so I pick them all up and I says, this is freaking ridiculous. But here's, here's my thing, you know, I'm no longer going to leave my stuff out because evidently this dog, you know, is going to, you know, even if they're up on a shelf, oh, it's a plastic bag. She wants a plastic bag. Forget the dozen or so toys that we have for her that are like right there in front of her face on the ground. She wants a plastic bag. So now I'm going to have to start keeping my stuff in the cabinet, in the humidor, just completely locked away. On top of the refrigerator. On top of the refrigerator, mm -hmm. you know. Dogs does anyone, are like little kids, man. Does, any, has, does anyone else out there have issues with their pets mm. getting into their cigar or pipe or smoking stuff? I want to know. Uh, no, because, well, first no. of all, okay, first no. of all, we've got two elderly. I'm the only one. You, well, maybe because. <laughs> mm -mm. Go ahead, Paul. i got two elderly cats, <laughs> about 15 years old. One is one is an absolute food freak. Like she, she loves, yeah, human food, specifically chicken. So I've kept cigars on our our uh, center counter. Yeah, uh, won't even go near it. Won't go near any of the tobacco, or whatever. And my do I have a dog, a corgi, three years old, and yeah. with his little stumpy legs, there's no way he can jump up that high anyway. So, <laughs> uh, but to answer your question, no, I have not had that experience where they're ripping into my cigar bag or whatever i and again usually if i'm traveling or if i'm traveling if I'm going, <laughs> yeah i travel i travel a lot i travel to work <laughs> uh i keep it in my knapsack you know so if i'm whatever cigars i'm taking to work i'll keep it in my knapsack and i'll just zip it up so even if they wanted to get into it they can't get into it your knapsack yeah my very backpack. Old. Yeah, that's whatever. That's, whatever. It's a, that's yeah, like whatever. 70s terminology. I'm old school. Well, fanny pack. I'm old. Apparently. I'm old school. <laughs> Where's my nap pack? Where's my fanny pack? So the answer is no. No. 
Dave. Don't we have, don't have any animals. I don't have any animals. Just, tell you. I can't afford animals. He just has boys. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's definitely happened before. Not with my mm. pet, but my parents' mm. little sneaky dog on vacation one time. But with my dogs in particular, I've learned from enough of my favorite shoes being eaten mm. that you need to keep the shit you don't want them to get too high up. Yeah. Keep it somewhere. I've learned the hard way many a times. So you don't keep your shoes on the ground? I do, but I shut the door because I have a dressing room, so I shut the door to my dressing room. You have a dressing Mm. room? You have a dressing room. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, well, my house is like about the size of this room, so I better (laughs) have a dressing room. (laughs) It's technically a closet, but I've converted it into my dressing room. (laughs) That's good. But yeah, his his, uh, when we first moved in there, his dog ate my favorite pair of shoes. And I was really unbelievably, ridiculously angry. Oh. So you keep stuff if away Eric from him. If were here, he'd be feeling your pain. Oh, yeah. You got to yeah. keep it. You, you learn the hard way with dogs and kids, I imagine. Yeah. To keep oh, your gosh. things yep. out of their way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was your dog's way of telling you that keep it away. she didn't want you to go. <laughs> Maybe. 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 the If it was, it certainly wasn't trying to keep me from smoking because she didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, she left right. everything. You know, it's, it's a. And I'm surprised that the bag is destroyed, but nothing that was in the bag Mm -hmm. was destroyed. Yep. Both times that was the case. I mean, how do you find a pile of 100 pipe cleaners (laughs) and, you know, of the, of the hundred that were in there, you know, 90 were still straight. So, you, you know, obviously she wasn't interested in what was in the bag. She just wanted the bag. What's up with that? Dogs are so, I, my dog one time, I left a sandwich on the table. Yeah. And the time it took me to go get a glass of water and come back, he had eaten and was back in his spot everything but the lettuce and tomato. The lettuce and tomato <laughs> were sitting perfectly on my plate, just sitting perfectly. And the meat, the cheese, the bread, gone. Yeah. Like, no yes. place in it. Yeah. Not a vegetarian there. No. Nope. Just, just a kind of they, they know what they want. Apparently and, they do. And they'll leave alone whatever they don't want. That's Apparently awesome. Apparently they do. What That's you got to do, Dan, is you got to yeah. do a test. Okay. Just leave a basic plastic bag you left the other stuff no cigars no nothing or leave leave a cigar by itself well well that oh that too (laughs) yes but leave the plastic bag and see if the dog gets that we have to try that tonight yeah see i mean playing with bags with pets (laughs) you know i remember you know growing up we had a cat remember burry yep yep black and white big fat cat and we'd get a, I'd get a paper bag, and I'd scratch the back of it, and he'd come, <laughs> you know, crawling into the room, and he'd leap into the bag, and I'd, you know, pull my hand away, and the bag would go skidding across the bed and off onto the floor, and the cat with it, and I just thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> and he'd do it over and over and over again. It was like he was either stupid or he really enjoyed the feeling of blind flight. <laughs> every dog and cat has a favorite toy it may not be the toy that you want them to enjoy oh, they're, they're and i'll give you a, i'll give you a, a, a an example mm-hmm. we've got a a tennis ball that yeah. was meant for fletch okay. our dog yep guess who loves that tennis ball you not me. no <laughs> <laughs> our female cat she hunts it. She loves. Really? It. She loves to get it in her mouth and just carry it around the house. <laughs> we got a little a stick toy with a little feather mm-hmm. that's meant for the cats. Right. Guess who loves that toy? The dog. My dog oh my goes God. crazy for it, wow. to the point where we can't stop him. He just he'll he'll the moment we say the word play, he's just all ready to go. He oh goes right gosh. to the corner where we keep it, and and that's that's his toy. The one thing that I've found is like universal is the, the the pointer yes you know the laser pointer the laser pointer. yes yeah, that red dot mm-hmm. both dogs the cats they will go and it's yep. and our house you know it's all pine wood floors mm-hmm. so it's hilarious you, you, you slide up the cats are sliding the dogs are sliding around 
trying to get that thing. They put their paw on it. Where did it go? <laughs> Looking around. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's always fun. Try this in the wintertime, too, is I had three golden retrievers at one point in my life where I had that laser toy. Mm -hmm. Brought them out to the backyard in the wintertime, yeah. and you see nothing but three goldens just, like, zooming all <laughs> over creation, trying to f get that little red dot all over the place. I mean, they're, cl they're trying to climb trees. They're trying to go through bushes. They're trying to, like, I mean, literally, it is the funniest thing. And any, any, I write down, any, any animal, I think, would love, it loves that toy. Yeah. I remember an old story about Barry where uh, Dad was, uh, or was it, no, was it, it was, it was Smokey Joe. With Smokey Joe. Yeah, yep. and Dad was changing the oil on uh, a car, and was, you know had a big oil pan, and the cat went up to it and you know just kind of dipped its nose into it, just kind of get the feel for it, and like licked it, and then it's it like went nuts and like ran around the house like twice, and then just stopped and like fell over, and then my mom was out there and she's like, "What happened?" And my dad just looked at her and said. Must have ran out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> and then she chased him around the house, swatting <laughs> him with a newspaper. Oh yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. As far as we know. Mm -hmm. As far as we know. Yep. All right. Um, final verdict on the uh, Factory 57 here in the <clears> pairing. <throat> Talia, what do you think? Would you smoke it again? Absolutely. Ow! Would you, Ow! Would you smoke it with the uh, Jameson Black Barrel, or mm -hmm. would you... Oh, I smoke it with Malibu water. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I got you. 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 I think the cigar is. Uh, just a, obviously, obviously, it's an absolutely fantastic cigar. Just really, now it's becoming very creamy, smooth. Mm -hmm. A little bit of cedar sweetness, a little bit of earth, yeah. and I'm going to attribute that to the black barrel. The black barrel is very, very smooth now. So again, both are canceling out the pepper notes or the, mm -hmm. or the spice, and in, in either one. Yep, it's a great, great pairing. Yeah, I still get the pepper notes in the in the retro hail, but. Um... The, the cedar notes that you're talking about, I think they've been growing yeah. as the cigar has been going along. Uh, I smoked the cigar by itself earlier in the day when it was working. Never got any cedar notes. So I, I definitely yeah. think it's it's from the uh, black barrel, from black barrel yes. there. Black what about barrel. you, Dave? Yep, well, I concur, mirror everything everybody says. You know, very, uh, very pepper, <laughs> very, uh, you know, it's creamy. <laughs> yep, my nose. drink is gone. Yeah. It's not the it's gin, really... obviously, Dave. No, it's not the gin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. The monkeys have left the building. We're going to get you on gin. Yep. Don't worry about uh, it. Yep. It's right. going to happen. Keep it to the end of the year. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do you have another gin in your portfolio? Malfi, that Italian gin I was All right. you about. All right, that's going to come later on this year, Dave. Yep, wicked yep. citrusy, like no oh. juniper notes. So All you right. can't even say it tastes like a gin, Dave, okay? How many okay, botanicals? Whatever. How many botanicals? Seven. Seven? All right, Dave. That's that's forty. Yellow. It's forty less than it's the last. Forty one. less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't taste like potpourri. It has potpourri. those Sicilian lemons in there. Mm. Oh, see now you now you now talking, you're oh, talking, now you're talking more like a limoncello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. it's not like a limoncello, but yeah. it has those no. like it's a lemony Kick citrusy. Take the botanicals gin. to the curb. Does really it, wait, does anyone does anyone drink limoncello here? Yeah. No. no. I don't even know what that is. No. It's so it's an Italian it's liqueur. It's made from lemons. Yeah. Yep. Did you ever have that as a pairing with a cigar? I have not had oh, it's, it as a pairing. Oh, it's phenomenal. Hmm. Phenomenal. Yeah. Yes, I would recommend. And again, you would want to have something that's going to keep up with it because it is, it is a little... How do you drink it? Just, just <laughs> by We keep it. We keep it in the refrigerator. I'm sorry, in the freezer. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to have it cold. Yep. Nice and cold, and you just you just sip it. You know, it's just going to be just a sipping drink with a. And I would say you'd want to have something at least on a medium basis or yeah. a little higher, maybe medium full. But it and it doesn't really matter what type of medium full cigar you have. Uh, it I think it goes very very well with it. Hmm. It's an aperitif. Yeah. So it's meant to calm down that the stomach after down, dinner. Yeah, after, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And I think if he was still with us, so it's like Sammy, a Sam, Sam thing. it's a it, well, it's, it's a, a Sam, it's a light Sam thing because Sam, Sam, Sam's, Sam. The, it's, it's Sam the barman. It's not going to be a journey. <laughs> it's going to be more at home. 
<laughs> Back porch. I'm going to take you on a flavor journey today <laughs> to countries you've never been to before. <laughs> well, would want to go to. Oh, follow the beard. Sam. Follow the beard. God bless you. All right. Yes, God bless Sam, wherever you are in the world. Um, all right, that's it for the first half of the show. We'll be right back. We're going to be smoking Bob's Chocolate Flake. Don't go anywhere. So how did Tobacconist University start? Where did the idea come from to start doing something to train other people's staff in the art okay. of... Uh, tobacconist stuff so uh i opened in september of 95 by january i knew i was a complete idiot even though i'd read everything i could <laughs> january 96 i went to cuba just to to really try and because you know it doesn't matter how much you hang out in shops and if you've read everything there is to read on cigars at the time you literally could read everything there is to read mm. and i did and it wasn't enough so i went to cuba i got lucky i i had ran into the director general of uh, cuba tobacco at the Partagas bar. We became like, you know, great friends mm. uh, drinking there. And he gave me access to farms <laughs> and all sorts of old um, books and documents and uh, really cool stuff. And when I got back, I turned it into like a fundamental educational course for my tobacconist because I, uh, you know, I always wanted, I didn't want to compete on price or volume in my business. I wanted to be a luxury, a boutique, a product specialist. You know, I wanted to be the, the best professional we could be. And so it made sense that if I'm having a hard time being that person, I need to create a system to help others. Mm. And uh, I started on that in 96. And I believe by November of that year, we started teaching a course at a local hotel in a, where the general manager was a customer of mine. We had like 30 or 40 or more customers come in and we taught it over the course of a month. It was called Cuban Cigar University. Um, then I had opened a store by November of that year in New Hope, Pennsylvania. And a year or two later, I opened another one back in at Marietta, Georgia, Atlanta, um, where my uncle and aunt ran it. So I was training them. I was certifying consumers. And um, it used to be a giant binder. It still is. I mean, it, you know, that's the old version. I have it. Right. That I would give to employees. And then I developed a test. Um, and then around 03, you know, I saw the way the industry was going, uh, so many challenges, uh, retail side, legislation, taxation, that I wanted to, I call it turning it inside out, you know, instead of just making it for our shops, I wanted to make it for every shop. And I spent from 03 to like 05, 06, you know, because you, you think it's simple. Oh, I'll just make it for everybody and I'll put it online. Sure, but it was a lot of work, and then when you do that, you see all the holes you have. So I had to double down on pipes, make that better, get video for rolling. So it was a process, but I think by '06 we became um, the official academic curriculum of what was converting from the RTDA to then being the IPCPR. Right, and uh, you know we've just been growing since. Uh, you know I remember uh, we didn't have any. My own my employees were the only certified tobacconists at the time, and slowly but surely i mean i think today we're up over 667 or something certified retail tobacconists um with you know many more than that apprenticing so it's it's been quite the ride wait do we get a little chocolate though hello hello everybody oh, yeah. we are back and we are smoking Bob's Chocolate mm. Flake. That mm. has been a longtime favorite of Gawith Hogarth and Company. And um, from the Laodice website, who is the d distributor of uh, Gawith Hogarth tobaccos now in the United States, it says that Bob's Chocolate Flake is a customer favorite featuring a complex melange, mm. blending components and casings. Brazilian, Zimbabwean, and Malawi, Virginia leaves from a naturally sweet grassy foundation elevated by spicy Malawi sun-cured leaf, robust Malawi burleys, and a modest portion of smoky Latakia. A subtle casing of cocoa, chocolate, and vanilla complements the mixture's natural sweetness with a distinguished yet familiar finish. Dave, quit touching the tobacco. I'm just showing it. Hmm. <laughs> 
People have to smoke that. All right. Uh, it's manufactured by Gawith Hogarth. It's called an aromatic. Um, Burley, Latakia, Virginia. Cocoa, chocolate, vanilla toppings. It's a flake, a big flake like you just saw there. Wow. Uh, six inches long when you buy it in the uh, bulk format, which is how we sell it. We sell it by the ounce here at Twin Smoke Shop. And we are pairing it again with the Jameson Black Barrel, mm. which if you can see the bottle at all, <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> so this should be a very good this should be a very good segment here um yes. so first impressions Ow. of the of the tobacco here dave i know the first time you had this stuff you you know we're like oh what, what do you th what I do think you think yeah it's definitely settles a bit so um no it's uh you definitely get uh, a chocolatey room note and I'm getting some earth and some uh, a little bit of fruit from the Virginias, mm -hmm. and there is this nice cocoa note that's mm. going through it. That's kind of like yes. peeking its head out, saying, "I'm still here," but it's uh, it's really nice. It's like a afterthought. I like it. Really nice. Mm, very good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, at the chocolate note is definitely playing a very minor supporting role, Dave. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree with that. I'm getting a lot more fruit tones, mm -hmm. wood, mm -hmm. uh, earthy, earthy, a uh, little bit of hay. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you're right. I do get a little bit of that cocoa note um, on the exhale. The room note, absolutely, you do you do get that that chocolate cocoa note as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Retrohale, though, is really nice. Yeah. Really nice. That's just a nice little subtle sweet, spice. subtle sweet spice, too. Oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. really good. This is different than I thought it would be. I mean, when we t when you first brought it in, I'm like, okay, it's going to be, a, I guess, a lot more chocolate. Uh, to me, I mean, my assumption would be a lot more chocolate tones, mm -hmm. but it's but it's it's so subtle. Mm. But I don't know if I would want to have a chocolate Pipe tobacco. Well, it's got with Hogarth, man. Well, everything I, I, they do is, is I, just yes. on point. I, I, Dave, you're, mm. you don't. I absolutely get that. <laughs> now, Talia, I'm I'm really because you know we the only reason you smoke a pipe is because of us. Mm -hmm. So this is like yes, the <laughs> sixth pipe you've probably ever had in your life. Um, May I have what do you lighter, think, darling? <laughs> Thank you. What do you think? about the tobacco here it's actually funny because instantly before i mean drinking the black barrel with mm -hmm. it i got chocolate off the bat mm -hmm. so i got chocolate like right away mm -hmm. but then i took a few sips of the black barrel mm -hmm. and like you guys said it did kind of fade into the background the chocolate mm -hmm. a little bit but at first i was like this is like an ice cream sundae <laughs> yeah <laughs> first, it's it's really first, really good yeah the first puff i took off of it um but now it's like a nice sweet and spice balance that mm -hmm. I've gotten since I've been drinking the Jameson with it. Mm. All right. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's rich, it's dark, it's sweet without being too sweet. Mm. Um, to me, you know, the, the burleys are kind of up front. They're nutty, they're earthy. You've got the cocoa notes that are natural with the burley and the toppings, I think, just kind of enhance that kind of flavor there. Um it tastes like summer. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a weird thing to say about it? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I get like some stewed fruit from the Virginia, occasional notes of hay and bread and hints of citrus here and there. Mm -hmm. And um, the Latakia, you know, it's a very minor, it's about 8% of the blend is Latakia. And uh, that's more in the background, kind of adding some smoky notes and some spice. And Latakia with a chocolate i think just it it gives a little bit of depth to the chocolate notes that are going on here and they're you know the obviously the chocolate is not a natural tobacco taste you know um you know in the cigar we have those cocoa notes and stuff like that and it's you know but there's like chocolate there's a difference between a kind of a natural cocoa and like a chocolate syrup kind of a thing and you can tell that chocolate's been added to this but not so much in a way that it really gets in the way of smoking the tobacco you're, you're mm. enjoying the tobacco i think for what it is uh, it's more in the smell room smell the room it's note more, more than the, room the note. uh the mouth feel i feel <laughs> the room smell you smell and the mouth feel you feel yeah 
<laughs> mm. But um, giggles. If somebody if somebody likes chocolate, I think they're gonna like this a lot. Yes. Now with the pairing, mm-hmm. I think the black barrel is bringing out a lot more of the Latakia notes for me. It's bringing out a little bit more, more spice, of the a little more smokiness, a little bit of spice, a little mm-hmm. bit of leather notes. The sweetness has been pushed back a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm liking this a lot, though. I really do. I think it is a very, it's a very good pairing. And I'm, I'm going to say, at this point, it's a contrasting pairing. Okay. How so? Because it's bringing out a lot more of the Latakia notes. In the beginning, when mm. before I even had the Black Barrel, it was bringing out a lot of more of that fruity t- tones, the the wood tones, yeah. and and, the, and a little bit of the chocolate. Those those notes have been pushed back a bit, and now it's bringing forth the Latakia. Even though it's only eight mm-hmm. percent, it's bringing out a lot more spice, a lot more leather tones, a little bit more earth. Mm. Um, I'm, and I'm really enjoying it too. Mm. I mean, it's. Kind yeah, of like the best of uh, best of all worlds. It's kind of putting the the Virginias kind mm. of in a different kind of mode. Mm. Hmm. You're not experiencing them the same way. It's it's, but it's really a great pairing weird. though. Yeah, I it think really is. Re- I think it's really good for me. It's like the opposite. I'm getting more Virginia, like the fruits and stuff are coming out, um, and the the chocolate's all but gone. But I'm not getting the only time I'm getting maybe some of the Latakia is in the retrohale. I'm more. I guess I'm. I'm. To I me, it's side, a complimentary pairing. I would side more with Paul uh, with my own palate here. I I think I'm I'm getting much more smokiness, um, and not quite as much of the fruity sweetness with the um, uh, black barrel. What are you What are you getting Ooh. there? Yeah. With the pairing, oh great Maven. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, like I said, when I first smoked it and I hadn't had the black barrel, <laughs> I really, it was like... hot oh, spirits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell we're into the black barrel, people? So <laughs> It's actually our second bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's the straight man. What does that mean? Oscar, what does that mean? Paul is the straight man. I mean, we all know Paul's straight. So, <laughs> what is, I guess what I'm is not it? the uh, the comedian here. Am mm-hmm. I just like you know? He just, he just puts. I'm, right the, out I'm there. the Abbott mm-hmm. of Abbott and Costello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yes. Mm. <laughs> all right. So let me, let, let me ask you. All, let me ask you all a question here. You know, last year, last summer, we had weather wise. One of the best summers we've had in decades. Mm-hmm. The one we couldn't experience. And we couldn't do <laughs> anything. Um, now things have opened up. You know, places are open. Things, you know, things are opening back up. Is there anything that you are really looking forward to do this summer mm-hmm. that uh, you were not able to do last summer? Yes. What would that be, Paul? Two words. Two words. Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Ooh. Jimmy Buffett. Because that's something that my girlfriend and I do every year. I mean, you know, we're parrot heads. She's mm-hmm. a huge parrot head. She's been a parrot head longer than I have been. That's um, nice. And uh, we go to see Jimmy Buffett every summer. Generally, he's going to be at the, well, I call it Great Woods, but it's the Xfinity Center in Mansfield. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's on this year. Last year, we canceled everything. Obviously, I so did everyone else, so we couldn't go. We held the tickets on, so... We're going to go this year in August, and uh, the tailgating, if you've never been to a Jimmy Buffett concert, and you have the ability to go and go to the tailgating, oh my God, it is just what is the tailgating one, big, like one big party, <laughs> one concert. big party, my friend. It is, mm-hmm. is, is incredible. You've never seen anything like it. It doesn't matter what event you go to, there's nothing like a Jimmy Buffett tailgate party. <laughs> it goes on for about seven or eight hours prior to the concert <laughs> and it just continues on through the concert and it goes that way well they can, after uh, the concert they can enjoy the music yeah, well <laughs> i've seen hey, jimmy wait, good, i've man. seen i've seen jimmy buffett without the tailgating and you're right david it is it is i, I mean we've seen him so many times we know his set list okay so uh we love his music but it's just uh everyone is so in such a good mood everyone's willing to share everything mm-hmm. they have you know, it doesn't matter. There, it's just a one big uh, 
friend fest, if you will. I, friend fest. Yeah, it's, it's, friend it's, everyone's fest. friends there. Oh, you know, go to friend fest. It's right, friend, friend fest. fest. No, I can see bro? that though. It's, like it's, I went to a Steve Miller band concert, mm-hmm. and everybody was like, "There was a group of people tailgating, and we didn't have any food because we're dumbasses, yeah. like twenty-two years old." Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, come over. Mm-hmm. We have all this." It's the same kind of thing, like that type of music. Mm-hmm. Everybody's mellow. Everyone's hanging out. Everyone's yep. having fun. So yeah, yep. it was like I can the same at Rush concerts too. It was awesome. Yeah, people just—it's not like a heavy metal mm-hmm. band or anything. <laughs> 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 People are like friendlier and, and you more get peop- communal. You get people from all ages too: young mm. people, oh, middle yeah. age. El- uh, yeah, I won't call them elderly. Older, <laughs> um, but because he, because he, because his genre he goes from back early, to when er- you were early, a kid. Yes, early seventies <laughs> onwards. So I mean, you're getting you're getting se- almost several different generations that can enjoy his yeah. concert. Yeah. yeah, Rush was the same way. We, you know, yep. there'd be you'd be people there with like, you know, solid white hair and there'd be kids there, you know. It was mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Now, let me ask you this, Paul. You know, there's there's bands you go to see in concert who you know, the, just the way they want to perform. Everything is is timed and performed exactly how it is on the album yes and then there's other bands who you know take if liberties you go, you go yeah they, they take liberties mm-hmm. or maybe they sound much better live than they do on the album um i've been to bands like that before too but how how is jimmy buffett he stays true to his albums he's not going to i mean there may be one or two that he might do something different but for the most part 90 percent of the time he's going to play the songs exactly as they are on the album mm-hmm and I think that's what the, par- the 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 audience wants. Yeah, yeah, the, you know? that's the nostalgia, yeah. right? I mean, he'll he'll he may go into some deep deep cuts. There are certain songs that we don't hear him play that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like I'll say, you know, let's get drunk and you know, I'm not going to say the word, but anyway, <laughs> we that 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 okay. I, I, of all yeah of all the procreate. Of all, of Thank all, you, straight man. Of Paul. all the times that I've seen him, <laughs> I think I've seen him play that once. Mm-hmm. You know. But in, in in essence, he he's very true to the albums. Mm. He won't he won't veer too too far off that. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Rush is much the same way. They uh, they're they're sticklers to uh, how the music is written, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, their rec- the recording and live is almost. They have such an amazing audio guy. Like if you listen to like uh, you can listen to the same song live and then recorded and you're almost like you can't tell the difference because only at the end and the beginning of the song do you hear the crowd mm-hmm. and it's just it's crazy like how how high quality the audio is but um yeah it's it's rush concerts are like absolutely amazing it is i would i would hope they are like jimmy buffett concerts <clears throat> Okay. I don't know if those things have ever been said before in the same <laughs> sentence. Well, I mean, as far as performance goes, it sounds it Rush is exactly like Jimmy Buffett. Rush is a, is Rush is a unbelievable musicians, mm-hmm. and they got great songs. I used to be a huge Rush fan when I was in high school. I never saw him live. I wish I did. Mm. Unfortunately, won't be able to see him again. But yep. that's just yep. you, know, you know. One of the bands I saw live once was uh, Pink Floyd before they broke up, and that was amazing. When was this? Oh, long time ago. Back in the eighties. Yeah, really. Long you saw ago. Pink Floyd before David Gilmour and uh, Roger Waters broke. Yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, God, you were. Uh, he was wow. like six. No. <laughs> no, they were. They were. They got back together for a little bit. They did. Yeah. It was when in was the this? Nineties. Was oh. a really short while, and oh. then he came out with that album that basically shot all over, like you know. Uh, oh, yeah. But. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like, no, uh, I, I, don't, aware of that. I don't know but, anything about that. Yeah, <laughs> they had the like, world. Literally, I know nothing about that. They had the world's largest disco ball. It was insane. I yes, just, I did remember it, that. I yes, saw it, about, mm-hmm. saw it at Great Woods. It was crazy. It was huge, mm-hmm. and uh, it like went up on a pole and then like blossomed into a flower. It was pretty trippy. Mm. Yeah. It sounds trippy. <laughs> it was pretty trippy. What, about, what about you? It's the only concert I was sober for. <laughs> what, about, what about you, Dan? What do you? What do you? Uh... What are you going to enjoy this year that you couldn't enjoy last year? That's a that's a really good question. See, I, I've you know, um, 
twins keeps me so busy and my girls my teenage girls suck so much money out of my life that i don't i don't really have a lot of opportunity to do stuff um i know that you know we used to take uh, we would we would take family vacations uh down to central florida where i um I, I lived there for several years while I was in uh, graduate school while, while I was in seminary. We have lots of friends down there. And so it's not so much about going to Florida to do all the touristy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's about, you know, visiting friends, you know, that that are like family to us and doing the beach and stuff like that. And we had we weren't able to do that at all. I would love to do that again. Mm -hmm. Um we had our, we kind of did our family vacation getaway a couple of weeks ago, um, when uh, you were on with um, Nick Laramie. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was doing. Uh, so we went on our first family getaway in a year and a half, and that was great. Being able to get out of the house and go somewhere away was really really good. So I've kind of already done mine. The thing that I was looking for to. We're only halfway through the summer now, so you can. I have another week. I have you, another week's vacation. Yeah, so maybe you can find something that you didn't do last year that you can do this year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I could do that. Yeah, me and the kids were supposed to go to a Dragon Force concert uh, in COVID, and that got canceled. I and thought you were going to go to the Voltron reunion. Uh, no, and uh, <laughs> they rescheduled it for this year. Voltron? And, no, oh. the the Dragon Force concert, oh. Dan. What's yeah. that? And. Uh, they canceled it again. Really? Yeah. Why did so, they cancel it again? COVID. You know, it was it was in March, so it, 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 but. Oh yeah, it was before they opened everything oh, up. Yeah. So. Before they opened everything up. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it was the same. So yeah. maybe maybe they'll come back later this year, or worst case, early next year. Now Oscar here says that he's one of these people that thought that Buffett sang the Pina Colada song. No. <laughs> Margaritaville. No, who, who, That's who Margaritaville. Sing, who sings the Pina Colada song? Oh, pina colada. Yeah, that's that's the that's 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 uh that's uh, Bro uh Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to know what Talia is going to do this year that she couldn't do last year. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you what, what do you, what you plan on doing that you couldn't you do last year? year? Honestly? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, on, no. Last, I want no, you to lie. Last summer lie. was <laughs> Last summer was probably the best summer I've had in like 7 or 8 years. <laughs> like <laughs> Why, why I did so? nothing. I mean, <laughs> the things I like to do in the summertime are cookouts, beach days, and hanging out at my friend's lake house in Sunapee. Mm. So my, well, my friend's parents' lake house. So they weren't really working. Mm -hmm. So I got to go to Sunapee like every other weekend. Oh. York beaches were open, so I could go to York whenever I wanted. Nice. My parents were always home, so I went to their pool. My uncle his pool like i had a great summer last year i'm really not doing anything different this summer like last really? summer was incredible i got an amazing tan i was pretty See, slow with just, work i haven't even opened my pool <clears throat> i was really <throat> slow with work so i had like plenty of time to go to the beach or the lake or whatever see like on the, on the weekends we used to have people over all the time major cookouts um you know and, and it, it actually started, and this is kind of funny, because I know you love both these things, Jameson's and lamb. Yes. And I would be cooking the lamb on the grills. A guy would bring a handle of Jameson's. We'd have a great time. Yeah. And it, it ballooned into this big, you know, 15, 20 people over every mm -hmm. Friday night. You come over to Dan's place, bring a cigar, <laughs> bring a pipe, whatever. We're doing everything. What? You're the pastor, right? Yeah. And, and <laughs> COVID kind of just killed all that. And it, we haven't had people over or cookouts <laughs> or things like that in in a really long time and it's it's like and and you know my my girls because they had no place to go they just have turned into a bunch of slobs and stuff is everywhere <laughs> and it's it's now i i don't feel like i can have people over because i don't want to be judged and, it's, <laughs> no, and the dogs are chewing all the plastic, the dogs bags. Are chewing all the plastic bags and all this stuff and, you know so i've got this great garden this great space this great you know but you know mm -hmm. what what can you do I, I gotta i gotta figure out how to get back into that yep yep but you know now all my friends are you know at, yeah. you know what are we doing <laughs> on friday nights so working <laughs> you know 
Yep. Saturday, what are you doing? Working. Oof. Sunday, Paul's working. I mean, when can I have everybody <laughs> over to the house? I don't know. Maybe we can do the podcast yes, at your house. Yes, we're going to have to do the podcast at your house, Dan. Yeah. You know, we, yeah, we yeah. could we could work that out. Yeah, you know, we could work that out. I we're doing we the screen do, porch. We're doing think, the screen porch. I think we should before do a, before winter hits. We should do a podcast at Kurt's Lake House. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would be a long you ride get, on his boat. You better get, you on better get boat. you better get clearance from from him first. And well, the great thing about doing it at my house, we could all just kind of crash afterwards, and yeah. <clears throat> that would be good. Yep. Maybe we can maybe we can schedule something like that before the summer gets okay. away. Have three we have bottles a, instead <clears throat> of just two. We, yeah. We, 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 <laughs> we do have a couple of uh, dates I haven't quite planned out for August. Mm. So yes. Maybe we could do it, something in August. Yes. Know? Before summer ends. Yes. Before to, summer ends, yes. and uh, you know you, you still got lots of light. Yes. Outside and yeah, we could we, we could maybe do something. Mm-hmm. Rod says Rupert Holmes did the song Escape, a.k.a. the Pina Colada song, mm-hmm. and Oscar confirmed that. I said, okay, now I know what you're talking about. Because mm-hmm. there is a Garth Brooks that says two Pina Coladas. All right, that, yeah, I could, I could, I could, little, yeah. yes, but I, If I, you I, like Pina Colada, <laughs> you're getting caught in the rain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yeah. definitely not Jimmy Buffett. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> You're not into yoga. <laughs> if you, you have half yoga. a brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm. Yep. Guardians of the Galaxy brought all those back. I remember Rich, um, 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 Chris Pratt saying, if I hear the Pina Colada song one more time, I'm going to hit somebody. <laughs> 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 yeah, they got sick of that, apparently. On the oh, show. man. Oh, my goodness. Um so this is a nice busy month at twins yes because it's 724 month paul can you want to talk a little bit about what 724 month means so what does it mean paul? today is what does it mean paul today is what july is 12th so that means is it we, really it means we have 12 more days until saturday mm-hmm. wow. july 24th that's a fact and that is the day that kurt will be pulling the winner of the five thousand dollar. Well, he'll be pulling the well, the, the ticket. The ticket, right? The, t- <laughs> the ticket. Excuse me. The you ticket of the winner <clears throat> who will win. Come here, I need to pull you five thousand. Hey now, <laughs> hey now. <laughs> let me just let me just start over again. <laughs> so, Dupont, seven twenty, July twenty fourth is seven twenty four day. Get it? Seven. Between now and then. If you buy a box of 724 cigars, mm-hmm. you will get a ticket that goes into the grand prize drawing. Yes. And when Kurt pulls that winner, the person ticket. will receive the, <laughs> the ticket. The, the winner the will, will receive their choice of three 724 boxes, three 724 spirits, mm-hmm. the Corazon. The Old Forester mm-hmm. and the 724 Jack Daniels mm-hmm. Collect, mm-hmm. a thirty-five hundred dollar Dupont lighter, eighteen oh karat God. gold, with lapis lazuli. Lazuli. Yep. Lazuli. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. So it must be cool. It. Yeah, it must be cool. And a beautiful <laughs> and a beautiful humidor. Mm-hmm. So one box gets you one entry. <laughs> Two boxes get you five, five entries, and three boxes get you how ten. many? Ten entries. You've got 12 more days, folks. Don't wait. <laughs> That's right. Because the summer's flying by. Before you know it, it will be 724. Yep. And <sighs> snow. not least, by any <laughs> means, Saturday, September 18th, we have 11 to 6. The 24th annual Smoke and Blues Barbecue. Smoke and barbecue everyone is going to be a vip the 240 dollars that it, that is the cost of entry will get you 20 plus cigars which will pretty much take up the cost of entry mm-hmm. yep. you're going to get Fantastic. food raffles you're going to get entertainment you're going to get all of us yep. will be there <laughs> tattoos well are you all right mm-hmm. tattoos dave are you, are you giving tattoos out no but i think they're still doing the tattoos. Oh. dave's doing iron on tattoos, yeah, <laughs> doing iron on tattoos yeah. right to your face 
Yes, and if you happen to buy, if you buy the ticket and you happen to buy a box of any of our sponsor uh, manufacturers, you will get an additional entry mm-hmm. towards that twenty-four thousand dollar grand prize, which Kurt will be <laughs> gladly giving out. Which is the almost end of the day. everybody in the humidor. Yes, it is pretty much everyone in the yep. humidor. So, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Like we've been talking about, you know, it, that got canceled last year. Mm-hmm. All the major cigar events and parties got canceled last year, and I think everybody's going to be hopping to get to this. They're going to be stoked to, you know, like I, like I said, everyone's going to want to do what they couldn't do last year, mm-hmm. except Italia. She did every, she did everything, <laughs> everything last she year yeah, yeah. this year. <laughs> It was her best year ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry, COVID ruled. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm an introvert, so I totally agree. It was it was awesome. No traffic. Yeah. No. Tra- I know, beach. right? Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Nobody was around. Have you, yeah, seen, have you, you were seen? an introvert. 2020 was fan- it was like a dream come true. I'm not an introvert. If you were a germaphobe, 2020 was not a dream a come true. Like, yeah, I, we, we just can't stop talking about it. Christian Roa, you know, what do you think? What's it like being a world-class Everybody feels in the middle like of a global me. pandemic? And he was like, it's fantastic. This is great. Everyone's seeing it through my eyes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. it was, that was incredible. So um, speaking yes. of 2020 and, and COVID and all yeah. this stuff, lots of things were closed. Lots of lousy things happened last year. But uh, Monmouth University just came out with a uh, – uh, the results of a survey that they took, which showed that um, uh, there has been an uptick in relationship uh, relationship <laughs> satisfaction during COVID. Let me let me um, read the first <laughs> few uh, short paragraphs of the study here. Um, West Long Branch, New Jersey, romantic relationships have become increasingly important to Americans' happiness since the onset of the coronavirus outbreak, according to a National Monmouth University poll. Among those currently in a romantic relationship, 7 in 10 are extremely satisfied with it, which is up more than 10 points from prior surveys. Half of those in a relationship say they really want a night out for Valentine's Day, but they are more likely to stay home instead. Uh, among Americans who are currently married, living with a partner, or otherwise in a romantic relationship, 9 in 10 are clearly satisfied with their current relationship. This finding has been consistent since Monmouth started take, asking this question more than six years ago. However, the number of people who are extremely satisfied now stands at 70%, a marked increase from its typical 57 to 59 percent wow territory in fact the percentage who are extremely satisfied has gone up since the early days of the pandemic among both both married and unmarried people among both men and women and among white americans and people of color extreme satisfaction with one's relationship has also jumped since last year among those aged 18 to 34 and those 35 to 54, although it is long held study among those 55 and older. I like how they say whites and people of color. You know, color? They just, color. They say, they just say, you know, color. They can just say, color. time. We can just say everybody. But no, we're going to say whites. Dave's likes his black barrel. Yeah. Well, you know, whites I, and I, everybody else. I think it's, you know, they're taking ethnicity into account, well, too. They, they should. Yeah. And so it, it's very interesting, you know, that uh, things have jumped up right about 11 points uh, across the board. And it says, um, there's a quote here from the people who took the survey, too often we're quick to doubt relationships and see them as more fragile than they are. In reality, our relationship is a tremendous source of strength and stability in uncertain times. Our mm-hmm. poll in May found that more than half thought the pandemic would strengthen their relationship. That seemed like wishful thinking, but these numbers show that the optimism was warranted, said Dr. Gary Lewandowski, a professor of psychology at Monmouth University and author of the newly released book, Stronger Than You Think, The Ten Blind Spots That Undermine Your Relationship and How to See Past Them. 
Well, hopefully AI takes that into account before they take over the world. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, come on, Dave. I'm bringing it back to reality here. So, <clears throat> my question to you guys is, has, have you seen that true with yourself and people you know? Has, has COVID helped or hurt your relationships with your significant others? Uh, sorry. If, 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 if others. You, if you had them. <laughs> or <Yeah>. and, Talia. <laughs> Talia. Oh, well, yeah, it I mean, I got you married. you lot, didn't it? <laughs> I yeah. got married during yeah, the best pandemic. Best summer ever, right? <laughs> really? In the, the Show winter. the bling. The winter. Well, I mean, Show the, best, the bling. Yeah, yes. Best pandemic ever. Oh, actually, the bling is out getting cleaned up. <laughs> oh. You Empty dirtied fingered. it already? You mean it's at the pawn shop? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, last it's year was the best almost, year ever, huh? Now it's, it's almost down. 2022. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, where do I go from that? <laughs> Ow. Ow. Only up. Only mm-hmm. up. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, our lives, truthfully, I mean, obviously things change. You know, there's things that change, but our day to day didn't really change that much. <laughs> like, stop. Are you all right? Our day to day really setting didn't up? change that much. <laughs> you setting it up. You didn't. I'm not setting things anything change. up. Things change. I'm not. No. All things change. Stop. <laughs> Except me and my relationship with my hubby. I mean, he worked. I worked. Stop it. We went to bars. We went to restaurants. Like, nothing really changed. Stop it. You couldn't have gone to yeah, restaurants during yes, COVID. We, they were, they, they were closed for like two months, dude. <laughs> they only closed until May. They closed from March to May in New Hampshire. Mm. And my job is to go. So I went. <laughs> can, can you hear the crickets in Dan's head right now? Right? Like, May, they opened back up. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was at restaurants the whole t- the second they opened back up. I was yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He worked the whole time. I yeah. worked the whole what time. Is, I he mean, do? he works at a car dealership. He's a parts manager. He's a parts manager at yep. a car dealership. Yep. So a few of them got laid off, but he never got laid off. Mm-hmm. So we we consistently worked. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah, most, all of us did too. Yeah. yeah, I know. Most of my family that lives at least in New Hampshire, like we're still down to. All hang my out. friends were at home living large on their freaking monthly salary that was no, more than what they were making Ugh. and i'm like you best yeah let's not talk about that but um yeah like our lives our personal day-to-day lives didn't really change that much but did you get closer do you think it helped you really? I mean, we got it's married. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. That, I don't know. I don't know that, know. It, don't know that it really affected right it. off or something. Or I don't, I don't, I don't know that it do. really affected it no? because our lives didn't really change. Like he still went to work every day. I still mm-hmm. worked every day. You know, our our lives didn't really change. Um, so I don't think okay. it really affected it one way or the other. Mm, Paul, I mean it. It, in a sense, it didn't change, but I think you know we've al- we've always done things together. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it, if anything, it became even stronger because we were uh, together looking for things to do. We had to be a little bit more creative in the beginning, um, but it, like I said, it wasn't like we had to like you know stress our brains and all that. We just we just kind of went with the flow, mm. and uh, you know I. You know, she and I have a strong relationship, so not like I said, like with Talia and her husband, nothing really changed for us. You mm-hmm. know, it did, and uh, if anything, it just kind of brought us. I think our, our the re- again, I'm not going, I'm not going to go down that road, but it just brought the realities <laughs> of the situation we were dealing with, and and we're both on the same wavelength of that. So, um, yeah, it didn't. Nothing really changed. It just, I think, if anything, it just helped uh, maybe, you know, heighten the, the 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 the, the bond. Sex. <laughs> well, I, you know, I mean, if you if you look, if you look at the statistics, I guarantee you that's probably what it was. Yeah, right. You know, people just being I mean, bored. If you're if you're home, if, if you're home alone, on you and Nicole, if you're home alone, right. if you're home alone together, you know, of course you want to you want to you, you want to. I'm not going to say pass the time. <laughs> it's just. No, it's not that. It's you just say, honey, it, you want to it, pass the time? No, <laughs> I'm not no, talking about the pass it over I here, said, baby. I said, about I the said, space, baby. <laughs> you're Dave. <laughs> <Take over. laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I get caught in this trap. <laughs> You. I, I'll tell you about it sometime. 
<laughs> no, it was pretty much the same old, same old. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Same old, same old. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. Nothing's changed, Dave. Nothing's changed. changed what you... No, I have no sign a significant other. You know, so it was just you know. Did you and your boys get closer together? Uh, you know, we we closer. well we gamed more. Yeah. We gamed. More. Gamed more. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you more. feel like you understand them better? Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I feel like I understand them better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was good. It was a, it was an introvert stream. You know? <laughs> oh, I can't go out. I can't, I can't go anywhere. I have to Great. stay home and game. I have to stay home and play video games all day. Oh, yeah. I'm so sad. You I don't know. have to deal with that's people. I never stayed home. <laughs> yeah, see, that's basically Dave's thing. You know, is, 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 he didn't have to give he excuses excuse about why he home. didn't. Oh, I just, I guess, I will stay home. Isn't this great? <laughs> yep. You know. Yeah. Oh, are you coming out tonight? No, I got to go home and nap. No, none of that. No <laughs> lame excuses. <laughs> Incredible lives here. <laughs> the uh, not just blow the smoke team. Um. You know, we, you know, my family, um, I think I, I think, you know, as a fam as a family whole, I think we got closer together. We did a lot more things together. We would, you know, whether it was binge watching stuff on Netflix or Hulu or, you know, one of the other streaming services or, um, that's one thing that changed. Yep. We saw a lot more Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Netflix went way, way, way up. up um i got a lot closer to my daughters that way um getting involved with getting involved with them because they had they had nowhere to go and that that was nice and um and, you know my wife works in the medical field so she had to be extra careful about her exposures and our exposures that was a nightmare um so you know we had to we really kind of had to stay home you know because at the especially during most of COVID, she was working in a nursing home situation, you know, elderly home situation. She was terrified of being one of these people who carried COVID. And I know if you guys came in eighteen hundred people with someone all coughed, died, you, had to get you tested. know, and, and um, oh. um, but uh, uh, you know, we 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 got through it all, and it was, it, you know, I feel like we're stronger for it. Certainly. I think adversity really helps relationships. You hear that the CDC released that like 90% of the uh, COVID cases were false? Yes. Meaning what? The co the reported <clears throat> number of deaths. The, the, te the tests are faulty, Dave. The test have, 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 that's been proven, the test that they use is faulty. Well, what, they had they what had test. The, 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 COVID, the, the COVID test, when you go down to your local whatever pharmacy or whatever, those tests that they give you to, to see whether you are positive or negative, whatever, mm -hmm. it's, those, those have been proven to be faulty. So what does that have to do with people dying? They didn't die of COVID. They didn't die of COVID. Yeah. They died of other factors. Most of those people were already compromised. Well, let me, let me ask you this. I mean... I, this is gonna if, be, this if, is gonna be the conspiracy theory. If COVID, if COVID, if COVID, if COVID added something on top of that and complicated things, can you then say that COVID was the reason that, that somebody died, or do you say, well, it was congested? Well, heart the hospitals failure get money for it because you know that's what it was was congestive heart failure. Money talks. I mean, Dave, Dave, stop talking. You asking me? Yeah. Without getting into it too deep, again, here we go. But this is what I what, hole? what yes, okay, <laughs> rabbit hole. Forget about the rabbit hole. Do we have a bottle of rabbit hole? <laughs> we the, sure the, do. This this set this, <laughs> this third segment of, of not this. Just third smoke. segment of not just blowing smoke <laughs> down the rabbit hole. I, I in my belief, and I'm not the only one who believes that certain deaths were attributed to COVID because that's what. Mm -hmm. they were told to do mm -hmm. and i'm gonna leave it there so you a lot of the numbers that we saw were you guys are saying was, had had to do padded. more with padded money yes padded. And yes hospitals it, it, getting money and, and and it's not just it's not just from what i hear it's, it's, it's more than it, just that it's it's, it's, it's it's because of it's first party people that i've spoken to customers that have had to go to court 
to have mm-hmm. death certificates changed. Correct. Because it's not what they died from. Right. Like it's literally that prevalent where yes. it's 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 common. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a conspiracy. This is just what happened. Well, no, I, I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. All I'm saying is, say someone has pneumonia, and they've 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 got you know irritable bowel syndrome or or whatever, and <laughs> and they get COVID, and COVID gets them really really sick, and yeah. then the pneumonia gets worse, and they they die. Yeah. yeah. It, do you say it was pneumonia, or do you say or or you say whatever gives you five thousand dollars? Yeah. That's what the, I'm talking about. The it's flu like, or bronchitis. You, you know, or it could have been. It, it, it could have been the flu. It could have been bronchitis. It could have been, you know, a bite from a tick. It could have been anything, you know. And but the fact that they were compromised, that one straw on their back is what broke it. And it, it, to say that they should be compensated for that straw is just ridiculous, you know. Um, it's just, I mean, let's let's face it. The hospitals were never clogged. Correct. And I know that not because I was there. It's because I <laughs> it's because I talk to the people on a daily basis who work there. You know, these are the people that come in for their stress release, smoking cigars. You know, this is a, you know, it's on a, a daily basis. And we grew so much over the last year of mm-hmm. people, new people smoking cigars, new people smoking pipe. <sighs> You know, and it's just it's it's just painfully obvious from my perspective. Um, but and to see the CDC back it up is clarification in my book. They're constantly moving the goalposts. Yeah. What goalposts? Con- in other words, whether you whether you listen to Fauci, you listen to the CDC, they're mm-hmm. constantly changing things <clears throat> to adapt to the current reality. They, no. They, that that in it of itself, I will defend a little bit as far as like Fauci and stuff. Uh, so whenever you're dealing with science and you're dealing with a pandemic, um, like a flu or like anything else that spreads through a habitat, uh, it'll have peaks and it'll have lows. And based on those peaks and lows is how you operate against it. And that's why like Fauci changed his mind a bunch of times is be- based on the data that he was dealt with. And I agree with that. I agree with the fact that you have to change things based on the data you're given. And, and, and it will give you, you know, well, yeah, it'll just, things are the way they are. Science changes based on what's going on. Things get worse. Things get better. Things get worse. Things get better. It's, it's, uh, and now we're on the low end of it, thank God. Yeah, but now we have Delta. Which, okay, <laughs> all right. Which now, which, now which, we have the Delta. Okay, yeah. Which which, which is... might be very well. Again, this is just me, and I'm not. This is just my theory. That's is evolution. that that could very well be the side effect from the jab. What is the jab? The, the jab is the, the vaccine. Oh, the vaccine. Oh, oh. They call instead it the jab. Of, instead of letting... So but, in other words, the, the people are okay. still getting so, COVID who've had the jab. So the, naturally... The people are, are going to get... And a, we haven't seen... We haven't seen the fallout from this. From, from the... From yeah, the vaccine. From the vaccine. And I think we're going to start seeing it this fall. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it... Uh, I don't think the vaccine really matters in that part. In that part. In that fart. <laughs> um, because at anything, especially a virus... Uh, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with seven billion people, okay, um, when something is when something reproduces, it's never a one hundred percent reproduction. We know this because we have Down syndrome, we have uh, Aspergers, we have all these different things that pop up, and it's no different for uh, for a virus. It mutates ever so slightly and whatever works will spread rampantly especially if it's a highly mutatable disease and that's what the delta is the delta is a variant that is um you know uh spreading because it's it it was easy to spread that's how it mutated so now it's easier to spread uh and i don't think that i think that's i think that's very it's not anything surprising Mm -hmm. um 
they're saying that the uh the vaccine is is uh uh very diligent against it mm-hmm. um again i feel like people are saying some people some very prominent scientists that i know are are saying that masks are still a viable solution for something like that i disagree i think when it comes down to it the only real option for a community is to stay at home uh because that's how if you're not interacting you're killing the the transmission you're it's just because it's... you're an introvert and you want everybody to... <laughs> no spoken <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 like it's, a true it's, introvert it, it, it's if you're not interacting with someone there's no way they're going to get it it's just that's you that's can't just, develop antibodies just, for it either just, Yes, that that is also true. But the uh, and that's why I think staying home and playing Call of Duty topic? is the best thing we can do. It's amazing, it's amazing <laughs> we slide right into that. Virus. But in the end of the at the end of the day, for your point and and for my point, you either shut things down or you let things go normal. But wearing masks is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> we're ending that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All you people want that we'll, we'll we'll create some kind of special you know pay pay per view content. If you want to have more conversation along this line. Um, would you rather? We're gonna do a right, would you rather we'll, question. Would you okay. rather? Which again gets back to the whole summer thing. Very <laughs> happiness. We're very happiness. very relaxed yeah, now. Relaxed. Okay. So, here we go. Oh, where's Where's that rabbit I was hole? Like, oh my god! Uh, here's a question, and I guess I'll start with Dave. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. All right, All right. right. let's get it over with. Yeah, right? Exactly. exactly. I just want to get it out of the way. <laughs> Would you rather never be able to grill again? Oh. I can't grill now, so. <laughs> or only. Be able to cook over an open fire. Oh, never grill or only be able to cook over an open fire. Yeah, I would only be able to cook over an open fire. Hell yeah. Give it to me. All of it. Oh, yeah. You don't have any open way fire. to do that at your place. Right I now, doesn't. Do ma- well, if that was my only option, then yeah. mm-hmm. I would get there. Yeah. Okay. Amen. <laughs> All- open fire. Open, open fire. fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Preach on. Love it. Talia. Don't do it. Open fire all day. I have no no more oven, no more microwave. Yes, you Microwave? I don't even own a microwave. You don't even own a microwave? Please. (gasps) You and your lambs. Yeah. Lamb. The only thing you would just need to make sure that you can have a a big pot of boiling water for pasta. That's all. As long as you can have a pasta yeah, pot over you there. Can do that over fire. Pasta. You can cook that oh, over yeah, fire. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. As long as yeah. you have as long as you have yeah. access to have a pasta pot mm-hmm. over there, open fire all day. Yeah, mm-hmm. if I had to choose, it would be open fire. Mm-hmm. All four of us nope. are in agreement yep. that way. Nope. Oh yeah. And no a couple question. a couple of years ago, we had a big ice storm that came through in March. Remember this? I and do. power was out for like a week. Yup, that was not a couple. That Nash- was like five or six. That was National like eight years Grid ago. Was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, now my house being two hundred fifty years old, you know, one of the fireplaces was where the kitchen used to be in the house, and so it was the big, huge. So we cooked in the fireplace for the ten days or whatever it was until power came back on. What was this again? That was a while ago. It was a, it was a few years ago. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. big, big, huge ice storm mm-hmm. in like March. It must have been oh. like eight, nine years ago. I, re- re- I, I remember. Yes. The, that I remember. Yes, because I, re- I was living. Yes, I remember the ice storm of '08. No, I, I was in. I was in. The, I was in my current house, and I. Okay. And um, I moved in uh, 2012 to this location, so it had to be after that. Okay. I don't think it was that long ago. But right. We were out of power for about a week, okay. week and a half. And um, um, at first, it was like the girls were like, oh, it's Little House on a Prairie. Oh, this is great. <laughs> and three days into it, they were like, oh, my God, can we please <laughs> not have something cooked over the fire anymore? But I, I was please, loving Please, that's the best food. Cast iron, cast iron stuff. Put it mm-hmm. right on the. It was great. I oh, loved yeah. it. I could totally do that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All day. Totally do that. Mm-hmm. And well, there you go. I don't know, that was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. But, it's an uh, easy but it was one. Good. That it was, was an easy one. Apparently was. Apparently was. All right. 
uh, next Monday on the 19th on uh, NJBS, we're going to be capping our celebration of 724 month with Kurt Kendall. The man oh, yeah. himself. The beard. The bearded one. The who gnome. will be just back from the 2021 PCA trade show in Vegas. Kendra, the potion master, is also going to be here. Yeah. We're going to be smoking something 724, and uh, we're not exactly sure what it is yet because Kurt's bringing it, and he hasn't said. Even though I texted him today and asked, you know, what what are we he didn't didn't respond. But he's at the trade show, <laughs> so he's got an excuse. All right. But and you remember this, Paul. Yes. The last time he was on the show, he said the next time I'm on, I'll smoke a pipe. Right, we can keep him to it. We're gonna hold him to it. So we're keep him to it. Next week. No getting out, Kurt. We are going to and but we're gonna make it easy. We're gonna smoke something really good. Mm-hmm. We're going to smoke Esoterica Dorchester. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I'm lying. Totally yes, lying. You're totally lying, Dave. Totally. And uh, that is a fantastic tobacco. I think it's going to be right up Kurt's alley. We'll see if I am on par with that or not next week. But uh, we're going to watch Kurt smoke a pipe. And that's something no one has ever seen before. <laughs> ever. <laughs> so you're going to want to make sure you're yeah. here with us next week, Monday night, 8 o'clock, Facebook youtube whatever your choice is watch it live because history will be made next monday night when we smoke something new from 724 and you see kurt smoke a smoke a pipe and is he gonna like it i don't know but that's history man that's like jesus (laughs) be here next monday eight o'clock until then This is not just blowing smoke. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, everyone. Night. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is Not Just Blowing Smoke. Rolling with the top down floor.